What's up everybody, my name is Brad and today I've got another book review for you. Uh, just if you can tell the lighting is probably a little bit different in this. Uh, it's because I'm shooting this at nighttime. I usually shoot it during the day. I've got a lamp on over there uh, so the video doesn't come out all grainy and things. And there's some weird shadows going on over here. Uh, so it happens to look a little bit different, that's why. Uh, but today I've got another book review for you. And today I wanted to talk about The Wolf and The Watchman. And I'm probably going to butcher the author's name, uh, but it's Nicholas, not Ockdog. Um, he's a Swedish author, and supposedly his last name translates to English as Night and Day, which is pretty cool. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty positive this was also his debut novel. And for a debut novel, it was really great. I really liked it a lot. Um, it's a historical fiction, sort of crime procedural um, murder mystery novel. Um, it's set in 1793 on the Southern Isles of Stockholm. Uh, the book throughout, it's broken up in different parts. Uh, throughout the different parts, it follows a few different characters' perspectives. And I'm really going to try not to spoil anything. Uh, anything I talk about is basically going to be on the inside blurb of the book. Uh, but the different characters' perspectives, at first it sort of jarred me because it completely switched from who was talking about in part one. And I was like, you know, who is this person? Where are they coming from? What's going on with them? Uh, but once the story starts to get, you know, three-fourths of the way through towards the end, um, all the characters' perspectives and stories start to intertwine, and it wrapped it up really nice there at the end. I really like the ending to it. Um, but uh, this book, it's super dark and gritty. It really shows sort of the dark criminal underworld of Stockholm at the time and sort of how the lower class, um, their living standards, how poor and you know off they were and stuff. Um, it's also got some really grisly, brutal scenes of violence in the book, uh, which I really enjoyed those scenes. Uh, so if you like violence and gore and stuff, you'll really, I think you'll really dig this book. Um, but some of the characters' perspectives, uh, there is a Mikhail Cardell. Um, he's a city watchman. Uh, he's not really a police officer, it's sort of a lower level law enforcement uh, position. Uh, but he is a veteran of the war and he has, he missed, he got his arm cut off during the war. So he has a wooden prosthetic for an arm. And the story starts off with him uh, finding a corpse in the larder, which is a body of water. And he pulls the corpse out and he gets wrapped up in the investigation of trying to find out who this person is. Um, the corpse itself, it's mutilated, uh, so it's really hard for them to identify who it is. And he ends up teaming up with a lawyer, sort of slash pseudo uh, cop um, named Cecil Winge. And Cecil Winge has some sort of sickness, uh, so he's trying to get this investigation wrapped up and figure out what happened uh, sort of before he gets sicker um, into his you know, disease that he has. Uh, but sort of, I can't remember for sure, maybe a third of the way, halfway through the book, we find out who actually did uh, the murder. And so really the main point or the rest of the plot of the book is not finding out who did it, uh, but who the actual victim is and what was the purpose behind the murder, which I'm sure that's happened before, but it was a nice little twist. Um, instead of trying to find out who did it, uh, we're more trying to find out who the actual victim is and why this was done to them, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, one of the other characters' perspectives um, throughout the book, there's a Christopher Blix, and he's a um, young farmer. He's sort of moved away from home, come to the big city of Stockholm. Um, he was also in the war, sort of as a uh, medic in training, sort of surgeon, surgeon in training, if you will. And he's um, in the big city of Stockholm and trying to find his way in the world, trying to go you know, from the rags to riches story. And the fourth character's perspective is in Anna, what's her name? Anna Stina. Uh, she's an orphan girl who sort of works on the streets selling fruit. And something happens to her where she gets put into a workhouse. And her story, like I said, all their stories start to intertwine uh, towards the end of the book. And I really liked all the uh, storylines, how they sort of came to a crescendo at the end and all closed up together. I thought that was really well done. Uh, like I said, there's some great, um, you know, painted scenes in here by the author. Um, I remember there's a 
and I'm sure he did a lot of research because uh, it really felt accurate to what that time frame probably felt like, in my opinion. Uh, there's a scene near the beginning of the book where someone's going to the um, stocks or what do you call it to be hung, and there's a bar where you know the condemned who are going to die they stop in and they have a drink of whatever the liquor is, and the the bar they carve their name into the little shot glass and they put it up on the wall. And there's hundreds or so of shot glasses on the wall and patrons will come in and pay a certain percentage or pay a certain amount uh, to drink out of the the dead person's glass and based on whatever the crime was will be more expensive you know for the shot so a murder would be more expensive than someone for you know who maybe someone who stole something or something like that uh, but they, whoever you're, that's supposed to bring you good luck which that sounds really cool i'm really i really like world building and that was a really cool aspect of the world building. Uh, there's another, I can't remember if it's the same bar or a different bar. Uh, there's a scene painted on the wall and it's sort of all covered over with ash and smoke, you know, from years of fireplace and people smoking and stuff. And it's, if I remember correctly, it's people dancing and there's sort of a grim reaper in the middle, the skeletal figure. Uh, so scenes like that really painted a vi really vivid picture of, uh, you know, what the people's surroundings were like, what the character's surroundings were like sort of the everyday life of Stockholm, which I really enjoyed. Uh, overall though, I think I, I gave this book a four stars, a uh, four star read for me. I really enjoyed it, especially if this, I think it is a debut novel, especially for a debut novel, it was really great. Um, so if you're into um, historical fiction at all, or, you know, sort of murder, you know, crime procedurals, I think you'll really enjoy this. I suggest you check it out. Again, that is The Wolf and the Watchman by Nicholas Nicholas Not Hawk Dog. Sorry, I'm probably butchering his name, but um, <laughs> that's that's what it looks like to me. But have you read this book? Uh, if you have, I'd like to hear your thoughts about it down in the comment section below, whether you liked it, disliked it, um, whatever your opinions are. But again, my name is Brad, and thanks for spending your time with me today, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.